Ona, good to see you, Senator. Good morning. Thanks for having me on. I want to start by getting your reaction to what's going on with the NSA and the government collecting all these records. Well, that was uh, that's a revelation. Uh, why they would need uh, that much data uh, puzzles me. Uh, it, it just uh, seems strange that they would uh, collect all of that, only to, I'm sure, drill down on certain aspects later on. But, uh, but that was a surprise and uh, raises some questions that I think we ought to answer. And a copy of this order that was obtained by the Guardian newspaper uh, says this, it requires Verizon on an ongoing daily basis, that's the quote, to give the NSA information on all telephone calls in its system. But I want to play for you something your colleague Lindsey Graham said earlier this morning. I'm a Verizon uh, customer. I don't mind uh, Verizon turning over records to the government if the government's going to make sure that they try to match up a known terrorist uh, phone yeah. with, with somebody in the United States. I'm glad the activity is going on, but it is limited to tracking people who are suspected to be terrorists and who they may be talking to. That sounds a little like a contradiction to what the actual order says, but if their goal, Senator, is to obviously track people who are suspected terrorists and who they may be talking to you, might you be comfortable with this? Well, certainly we want to give law enforcement the tools uh, that they need and require uh, to track terrorists. And if they can uh, come now and show the Congress the need for this and, and why they need to collect this so-called metadata, um, then, then perhaps it's okay. It's not just her, Verizon. I think we can assume it's all the other carriers as well. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it just seems strange to me that they would uh, need that much information and, and start with that broad of a base. So well, I'll, I'll be interested in the answers to the questions. You want those answers? Sure, you bet. Yeah, I think it's incumbent on us. I, 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 one thing I've learned uh, after being here a while is that the administration, whether it's Republican or Democrat, will take every tool they're given and use it uh, to, to make sure that, uh, that we're safe. Um, I, I don't think it's always nefarious. Uh, they're certainly trying to do what they think is right. It's up to the Congress to make sure that there's a balance between civil liberties and the need to, to have that information, and that's what we're going to do. It's kind of part of a bigger question here, though, too. As you know, Senator, a lot of questions were raised about the NSA and its transition from an agency that used to really be about foreign intelligence gathering right. and now increasingly is looking at domestic spying. Are you comfortable with that transition in a post? Well, era. I, I think that that's uh, why we need to get some questions answered. Uh, we need to know why it is the NSA uh, doing this, what uh, where the FBI's uh, involvement here is, uh, how much is domestic. Uh, this is all calls between uh, domestic and foreign, but also all domestic calls as well. Uh, they're obviously looking for patterns here because they're not looking for the content of, of the calls at this point. Uh, but uh, I, I'd like to have some questions answered. Let me switch gears and talk to you about immigration because you're a member of the Gang of Eight and you talked Hi. with House Republicans about reform yesterday. I want to play what the chairman of the House Judiciary Committee, Bob Goodlatte, said after that meeting. And I think it's very clear that the House uh, uh, will not take uh, the Senate bill. Uh, there is an effort on the part of those senators to improve the Senate bill as it moves to the floor, but uh, it has a long way to go from the House perspective. From your perspective, where do things stand now? Well, from my perspective, it has a long way to go. The, the bill that the Gang of Eight introduced was a starting point. Uh, we improved that bill in the judiciary process and the markup. Uh, we had several days of markup there. We'll go to the floor next week, and it will likely be improved again. But still, I wouldn't expect the House to take up the Senate bill as it is. The House uh, will likely move forward with their own bill. Um, and and uh, in the end, I hope that we have a product that, uh, that, that Congress can pass and the President can sign. Uh, but I, I think we've got a good process here. We'll go to the floor. We'll have an open process, a lot of amendments that will improve the bill specifically uh, with regard to border security. Well, let me ask you about that because two of your colleagues, John Cornyn and Rand Paul, are pushing amendments for tighter border security. Um, but are you concerned that these kinds of things could fracture the coalition that's been built? Well, we obviously have to get the right balance there, but I, I think we all recognize that we need stronger uh, border control elements. There's not much trust here right now uh, in, in DHS to, to go ahead and, and carry out these functions at the border without congressional oversight 
uh, without uh, some kind of verification. So that's why we put triggers in the bill. We just need to make sure that everybody's comfortable with that going ahead. Senator Jeff Flake, thanks so much for being on the hey. program.